All right. Yeah. So let's let's get into this this other burning topic that seems to just come up all the time just inside and outside quite frankly of our coaching community and that is the idea of starting a real estate team. So I'm going to try my best not to offend anybody, but I seem to <laughs> struggle with that quite a bit. Um, <laughs> but I was in a coaching session with one of our agents and I'm not going to say names, but we we came to an agreement that the reason she was wanting to start a team was simply because she was trying to avoid working with the client. Mm. You know, it's like, well, you know, you can you can beat around the bush all you want, but he, the thing I see most new team leaders, I'm talking about people that don't have a team yet that have this idea that they want to start a team. The idea comes from most of the time, if we're just being blatantly uh, honest, brutally honest, rather, it's because you don't you you don't you don't want to deal with the client anymore. Mm-hmm. You're saying, how can I create a business where I can make money from these other agents and not have to do the hard work? That's that's the, that's the reality. And for me, there's no worse reason to start a business is by avoiding some pain point or no, that's not a good way to do it. It's it's to avoid the actual work that we're in. And saying, how can I get these other mules to do it? And let me sit back and make money from them. But that's the idea that most people that want to start a team, that's how they originally think about it. Yep. And my argument to that is uh, uh, somebody that wants to start a team has a set of skills that allows them to pull from other people more than they can pull from themselves. That would be a good skill set to monetize in that world. But if you think you're going to monetize because you're like, dude, I hate working with clients. I hate talking with the consumer. And because of that, that's my company's vision. Because if Bob's on your team, Colton, let me ask you, what's the vision of the company? Well, it's because I fucking hate clients and I want (laughs) to work because I want you to work with them and I don't want to. That's the vision. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. And so I I don't want to totally demolish that that first point but i think that someone who says to themselves i want to be responsible for other human beings livelihoods i think you you owe it to them and owe it to yourself that the reason you're going to bring an agent into your world has to be something more than just you hate clients Mm -hmm. i don't know what your guys thoughts are on that first point go for it ben it's it so i i think it's um I, let's say sales skills are not leadership skills right? That's right so even if you're phenomenal at the sales process but you're you want to get out of it doesn't mean you're going to be a great leader and i think we see a lot of teams form because hey i'm selling a lot of houses um you know maybe some people approached me and i'm going to just bring this person on and start a team. But in reality, like one of the points I had um, was just, you know, it, it it's more about like the first person you attract is probably not the person you should be hiring mm. because you're probably attracting somebody a lot like you, where in reality, I think you should be tr- probably creating some leverage first and hiring more of an admin person, which is complete opposite of you, most likely. Like extremely yeah. detail oriented, sitting yeah. in the background. They're not the QB, um, and which means you're still in the front line. You're still with the clients. You're just having somebody help you with the process so you can do it more. Yeah. Well, let me it's, hold on. Go ahead, Colin. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I was gonna say just to touch on Ben's point. Like you're in a you're in a completely new business. It's not like That's oh, I'm head. gonna be an agent and and then I'll 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 grow through. It's like you're going from being a running back, Marshawn Lynch, to Aaron Rodgers. Like, you, it, you, it's just different. You're in a different business, you know? And to Ben's point, there, now again, there's multiple ways to do it. There's no right way or wrong way, but you should start a team out of necessity and you should do it in the right order. Like, you should be forced to bring on that assistant, not because, oh, I want to have this big business and do all these deals. It's like, man, I, I, I I can't see my kids any week. Like I got to help someone to get all these, these signatures and these dates, make sure we're online. So, you know, I think Ben, you're spot on with that. 
Yeah, and you said another point, Ben, that I think is a mass assumption where you said these agents that are selling a lot of houses wanting... I see it the opposite. I see well, yeah, the agents I, that don't sell a lot of houses being the ones that want to start a team. And you know what? Well, I had ego, 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 ego. That ego. was one of my big points. Yep. Yeah, and we'll go. We'll, we'll come back to ego. But here's here's the thing: agents that are selling a lot of houses, they're selling a lot of houses, and as a result, they're making a lot of money. And the agents that aren't selling a lot of houses try to get cute and say, "Well, let me go start a team. I'm not selling a lot of houses." That's the issue, gentlemen. Mm. That's the issue is no one's going to follow you. If you haven't walked the walk, what mm. makes you think that you're going to go hire people and show them how to do it? Because this was the other piece of, of conversation that I've had with agents. It's like, well, what is your value proposition to an agent coming into your team? And they always say leads. And I'm like, well, if, mm. if, they always say leads. They always say splits. They always do the same thing an agent says. When I say, why is a seller going to hire you? They start to fall into this mule behavior. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to offer them this. I'm going to offer them this. I'm going to offer them this. I'm gonna... And all they're doing is commoditizing themselves in the marketplace because there's always another team or another brokerage where they can get all those, th all those things and get a better split. Yeah. Because they can't... What they're forgetting is the real value of leadership is to help one person perform better with you than they could on their own. That's the value offer. And if you've never walked the walk, it will be very difficult for you to do that for another person when you can't do it for yourself. And so that's the argument Ben I would make is like agents that are selling a lot of houses most of them aren't that interested in building a big ego-based team. They want to build a production-based team, which are two very, very different things. The agent that doesn't sell a lot of houses sees the shininess. Well, I can have all these buyer's agents, and I can just go buy them a bunch of leads, and I can sit back with yeah. my feet up, make a little split from them. And those, that, those models rarely work, rarely work. It's a revolving door. Agents mm -hmm. quickly say, wow, there's not there. It's like that Wizard of Oz moment. They're like, there ain't no value here. Like, I can just go. That's what you think is you gave Zillow your credit card. I can get my, 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 I can get my credit <laughs> card too. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that was my point of this whole topic around starting a team is that it is a completely different business to Colton's point. You have to have a client experience system. You have to have a process. You have to have business processes. It isn't buy lead, get commission split. Right. If that's what you believe having a sales team is, I think you, you're you're going to have a very difficult, frustrating road. Well, and mm -hmm. to that point, that's an absolute necessity for you know any company or business is to have processes and in a plan in place. And so I would suggest maybe. You know, like you mentioned, one of the main, another main reason agents want to start a team is because they want to get out of the the working with the client, right? Well, yeah. I would suggest to them maybe take a look at your own process. Maybe the reason you don't like working with your clients is because you don't set expectations, you don't have a process, and so maybe start there for yourself and make your life easier now. And then, you know, sure, if you bring on an admin or a client experience or grow from there, but like. Start with those things now. Treat yourself like a business first, and then maybe venture to open up a, a, a an actual business, if you will. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. Is like, man, I, again, I'm not gonna. I would never name names, right? Like, I'm not gonna attack anybody. That's just not my. I don't think that's my. That's not our style, right? But it pains me. You, you got the agent that's been in the business for a year. He sells 18 houses and he's going to go build a team. I want to fly to his house and say, what are you thinking? Shake him and say, man, oh man, what, what are you thinking? Or the agent who on one hand says how bad he's struggling. And then other on, on the other hand said, I want to start a team. I want to be responsible for other humans. The first thing in leadership 
And, you know, is in John Maxwell, talk, any, anybody knows the first step in leading others is to lead yourself. I mean, mm. that's step one. Can you lead yourself? You know, because you will get exposed when you bring other humans into your world. Cause we know people don't have business problems, they have personal problems that show up in their business. So on day one, if you're a hot mess and you can't get your rear end out of bed, you can't show up on time, you don't have any skills, and your team member says, okay, well, Colton, man, I'm struggling to with that first conversation with these leads you're buying me. Could, could you show me how to do it? What are you going to do? Right. Well, I'm not, I don't call those things. Do as I say, not as I do. I have no right. idea how to talk to those people. Wait, you don't? No. Well, could you go with me on the appointment? Hell no. I've never been on an appointment. <laughs> What I are you talking you the about? <laughs> and so, I again, I don't mean to be so. Um, I don't know what the word is. Maybe you guys can help me out. But um, crash. What is it? Crass. Crash. Yeah. Crass. Pro pro probably. I mean, I just. I, I think that there's. It is such a big responsibility to bring other humans into your world. We see it all the time with agents that hire ISAs or hire assistants. It's always their fault, you know. They they want to look through the glass instead of looking at the at the mirror. Colin, you and I talked yeah. about this last week. It's like, well, yeah. it's their fault. It's their fault. It's their fault. That's another thing is if you can't own it, mm -hmm. a team is a reflection of its leader. Period. Mm -hmm. And so if you're watching or listening to the show, if that's a if you can't accept that, you got no business leading other human beings. If you can't own the fact that if they're screwing it up and if they're not doing it right, it's not their fault. It's your fault. Right. It's your fault because a team is a reflection of its leader, period. That's why in professional sports, they don't fire you know, LeBron James. Nope. They're firing who? Oh, that's right. The coach, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. right. The, the, the business... That is struggling. Who's the first one to go? It isn't the receptionist, you know, on the seventh floor. It's the CEO. Bye bye, That's motherfucker. Great. Bye bye. Next CEO. It's the leader. The fish rots from the head. Yeah. And so quickly, we'll just get into the two team models. You know, there's one that's based around the producer. You know, this mm. is the the rainmaker, the person who has a thriving real estate sales practice that is in business with the client. And they build a model that's similar to like a doctor where they've got a team of nurses or administrative people around them where all they're doing are the highest dollar productive things. Talking to the client, meeting with the client, getting the contract signed, and then her team of nurses are doing everything else. The other is more like a, a team ridge yep. where it's a team, it's like a broke ridge, it's a business. That's a whole nother model that requires somebody very talented running that that's what these agents want is that model more more so than the other model but it requires to colton's point a whole new set of character traits whole new set of of business acumen that i think a lot of agents you don't get in the first year it takes some time to build yeah so th those are i guess my thoughts when i see these agents that again that are still learning to walk want to start a team and I think what happens is maybe you are doing a little bit of production, right? And people approach you that are new in the business and they want to do it too. And you're, yeah, come on, join me. And people just say yes to everyone. And it needs to be 90% no. That's right. And you need to, I think you just also have to have a really clear business plan about what model you are building, what your goal is, and kind of have a hiring like plan, right? okay, we, we need to put this person in place, then this person, this person, right? I know my system works for me, but is it repeatable? If I bring somebody on, can they repeat what I am doing, right? Um, and really System, like, Ben, these agents don't have all. any system. It's <laughs> right, like, I'm gonna, right. get them boom, I'm gonna get them boom town, and then I'm gonna spend $1,000 on Google Paper Click Leads, and that's the team. Yeah, no, not gonna happen, right? Yeah, no, I mean, not, it won't, I mean, that's why brokerages are failing at a big level is because yeah. they're trying to lead with no field experience, right? Yeah. So if it, if an agent thinks they're going to do it, 
it's just not going to happen. I, I think it's 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 another reflection of um you know, I Grant Cardone talks about this a lot, you know, that like the the middle class is gone, right? I think it's pretty similar in the real estate business. You're either small and mighty or or you've got, you know, the the saying the best way to make a small fortune in real estate is to start with a big one, right? Mm. And so you've got the money, you like either you are going, you know, mega megatropolis or like you're you're small and mighty. It's going I don't know if there's going to be much room for the in between with with the way things are right now. Well, let me just add what what oh, I almost forgot to add this. This is what prompted this topic that I want to cover in this episode was the agent I'm talking about. She had like, I think, I don't know, I'm going to get close to the numbers. Eight agents, okay? Eight agents and like four admin people on the team. And last year, I mean, I wish I had the notes because I think they sold something like, and they didn't have eight agents last year. But this year, I know that they sold about tw uh between 20, I think 20 houses year to date, all right? And so we're making this episode on my birthday, on May 30th, right? So you've got almost six full months. So 20 divided by, yeah, what's the numbers, Ben? What is that? I think it's like four deals a month, one a week. Three. 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 Three point three. <laughs> yeah, we'll call it, give her a benefit of the doubt. Four deals a month with eight agents and four admins it's like she's making less than minimum wage to run this yeah. highly complex business model. And what I told her was, have you ever considered that yourself, if you sold half as many homes, well, and quite frankly, nine of the deals were hers. If you just mm -hmm. sold the nine and had no team, you'd make triple the money? Because what yeah. people don't realize is how draining having That's team right. members is. Yeah. I oh think you gosh. think that like they're gonna, it's it's this grass is greener type of thing, but Everyone in is. reality, usually they don't want it as bad as you do. They they just right. want it kind of handed to them, right? They need all their questions answered when you're not available, right? It's just it's, it's, it's the whole it's the whole idea that we talk about. Getting rich on an, on a spreadsheet. Yeah. The difference between, well, listen, if I got Ben, listen, if I get 10 agents and they all sell 25 houses and I get 35% of each one of those, dude, I'm going to be rich. Well, that's one thing. Then doing it is a whole nother thing. The whole idea of buying leads or getting leads is so easy to say and so hard to execute. There's so much nuance into making that a profitable business endeavor that most just so underestimate. They have no clue what goes into having a system of lead conversion and how much work goes behind that, how much tracking, how much effort, how many systems and operational things to, to get. Dude, we're talking about marginal conversion. We're talking about a 2% conversion to make that thing profitable. We're not talking about this I mean, success is in between the lines and it's very, very thin. And in order to get that, you need amazing processes, amazing systems, phenomenal skills. And I think that's why a lot of agents find themselves like, dude, it's not worth it, Ben, to your point. I'd make a lot more money, have a lot less headache if I just sold myself. And so right. that was the point of this is like, just consider all these things before you think the grass is greener, getting a bunch of other people to do it all. Easy to say, hard to do. No doubt. So again, uh, as you guys leave us this morning, if you guys have questions or you guys want to talk about potentially a coaching relationship, just you could schedule some time below. Talk to somebody on our team about our Listing Agent Academy coaching program. Decide if it's for you or not. And then we'll plan on seeing you guys tomorrow morning.